It is indeed four o'clock. It is indeed four o'clock. <laughs> the hour of the shadow has approached. Oh. Sixty four eighty in the house. We have K pop uh and others. Hopefully you're pretty soon. Uh, What's going on, Shadowhawk? Not much. Mm-hmm. Just been doing some stuff around the house, messing with the car a little bit today. Uh well, yeah, yeah. Uh, rode my rode my little stationary bike for a while today. Got some exercise in. Uh, you rode oh, your bike. I got, so I got a, a very cool surprise to show everybody. After a while, we'll wait till some people get in in here and uh, sure. let them check out a, a new acquisition of old shadows. Well, <clears throat> let's show some old acquisitions, okay? Oh, uh, yes, why not? Uh, I'll get it set up here. Uh, anyway, oh, no, wrong one. There we go. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Apex is in the house. Hey, Apex. What'd you do, oversleep? I get it. You have to sleep sometime. I tried to sleep uh, last night, you know. <laughs> Uh, get some rest and uh, do some things after New X Hex and the Apex show. And we held down the fort. We, we, we it was a good show. Or it? Didn't even miss you, Apex. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, oh, cruel. So cruel. Uh, we'll start off with some Bronze Age stuff. How about that? Signed. Mm-hmm. All right, I think this is the start of the... Clar- clarify for the newbies, Rex. When did, when did Bronze Age start? When did the Bronze Age end? Well, that'd be in the 70s, you know, around... You know, there's some debate on, on the years, but... Uh, basically, you know, like 70 up to the early 80s, you know, and then the Copper Age started, what they call the Copper Age. Uh, right. And, and so uh, tell me, you can see this, right? Big Christmas number one with Ant-Man. Mark oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's got the, I need to replace the bag because it's, you know, still got the sticker from where I bought it. But uh there's that and a couple of spider women here, uh, both direct editions. And then we go into the Bronze Age here, Mike Kaluta, and Shadows number one. I bought these a few years ago, about 10 copies for fairly reasonable. And for, yeah. and one reason I did uh, was, and then there's Shadow number 11 that I have, which appears to have some. Either printing, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on there, you know, with that. If that's a printing thing or if that's a if yeah, that's, it looks like well, a, I don't like think a, it's like a printer damage. Yeah, so that that could be you know fairly rare, you know, mm-hmm. printing error. You don't see that. Like there was more. something on the roller or something when it, you know. Yeah. Most of these were Mike Kaluta covers. Uh, I'm not seeing his signature here. I guess maybe this is Mike Kaluta. I'm not sure. Number 11 there. Uh, going up against the Avenger. Uh, the white albino looking guy, which Joe Kubert kind of drew. Uh, and then we, ooh, look, signed Mike Kaluta. Old style. Paul Point pen. In fact, I think at the end, it looks like 72, so... He yep, might have sure did. Signed it, Mike Kaluta, 1972, like the year it came out, somewhere mm-hmm. around there or afterwards. And then there's, and then here's another copy uh, signed by him. There were four in those 10 that were signed. Here's another one. 
uh, well, signed well. by him, all in ballpoint, and the last one here signed in ballpoint. Might have to cool. And then uh, another copy here, another copy. Like I said, I got 10 copies here. Uh, all in fairly and good shape, you know. Uh, I got those for about 10 bucks a piece, I think. Wow. Uh, Gil Kane's birthday today, and here's a Gil Kane Superman cover from the early the boys everywhere. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh, Jim Lee here. Nice. You might even have this one. I don't know. This is uh, maybe not because it was like 2004. Mm, no, probably not. But these it's covers. After, after I, 2000, I probably don't have it. Yeah, here's another Jim Lee. The covers and the things kind of intrigued me, so I bought these off the stands. That one, too. Um, here's one that's not Jim yeah, Lee. Yeah, I think I remembered hearing about Jim Lee, you know, doing Superman for a while when he went mm -hmm. back to DC. But, uh, yeah, I was out by then, dude. I might have a couple copies of this. This is number 100 of Showcase. Showcase premiered all these characters. At one time, you know, their first appearances starting with the flash and in four, mm -hmm. uh, with the hero theme. Uh, we've got Hawk and Doug's uh, Hawk and Doug, the hell, Hawk, Hawk and Doug, uh, Angel and the Eight, just so many hey. characters. How's your day? Crazy, it only ran 104 issues. Here's one of one done by Joe Kubert. And we go to uh, these are just mixed bag. Teen Titan Spotlight, Spectre number one, Infinity Crisis, Aftermath, Equilac, uh, Cliff Chang cover, 2006. So don't know Cliff Chang, but nice cover, Skull mm -hmm. cover. Uh, new Titans. Bunch of Titans in here, probably. Yeah. Generally, I try and group them together if I can. Uh, and the Battle for Bloodhaven. I read this actually pretty good, actually. Uh, mm. Okay. I, th I think I did. That was an Infinity Crisis Aftermath type thing they ran. Az Aztec, the Ultimate Man, number one. A DC character, kind of obscure, you know. Uh, Scooby Doo. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> see, you can see the old Aztec. You can see the old DC symbol here that was forever, right? From yep. the seventies. Uh, the old bullet. I'm not even. And then here we went to the the next, which I well, I don't know that this was the next. Uh, I think the one that replaced that one was the Pill Away, and then they might have went to this with the star. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I can't remember. I like the old bullet. Oh, that's a New York Post exclusive. That's why I have it. Macy's way to shop. So it's uh, it was a promo book in the newspapers. The oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did they get that with uh, was it Spider Man or something back in the day that came like actually in a copy of the newspaper? No. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those yeah. uh, Spider-Man, and I, I've invested quite heavily, about seven hundred dollars in those. I have about two and a half. And I can't remember uh, where I got them. Cool. They're, they're real thin. I, I think I may have got them like from school. I've got these old, uh, like uh, there, there was only public 20. Service, the the PSA announcement, you know, like for safety for kids and stuff. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's uh -huh. it's one about. Um, you know, fumes from uh, chemicals and gasoline and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually got Daredevil in it versus some kind of, uh, what's her name, Timora or something like that. It's like this girl that, you know, it's, uh, she overwhelms you hey, with chemical, chemical fumes. Happy hey, Carrie. You came, yeah. Kind of like Carrie. Yeah. She overwhelms you with chemical fumes. No, I'm just oh. teasing Carrie. <laughs> Uh, this was a Howard Chaykin Vertigo book, number five from 2006. A lot of this is going to be like stock that I, you know, they would like at my local, at one of the local comic book shops, they had like a full long box for like 50 yes, bucks. Yes, definitely one too. 
That's right. So I got a, you know, got what they had. I know on this uh, Battle for Bloodhaven here, they had a black and white sort of grayscale cover of this and a color version. Here's the colored version. Uh, but they did it in two ways. Huh, cool. uh, maybe we'll see one in here. Uh, this is pretty neat uh, when you have black line for like the main character and then the background, you know, you designate no black line, just separate color uh for the artwork that's always cool when they throw that in there yeah uh, i like this because it's tom grummet cover uh, i like tom grummet stuff i know shelby doesn't uh that's from 1993. See, pretty nice. see i like that that you've got the issue number you've got the month and the year Albeit it's very small and you have the price. That's that's the three things that I like to see. I had a glance on a cover. Yeah. That being said, you will not get that on Devil Flyer. <laughs> you know, yeah. but we're not doing a monthly either. I love yeah. this character here, this Panthera. And it was probably I mean, I like her look. She's kind of Hellcatish, you know. Or Vixen. Uh yeah, maybe. Um, That's another uh, Grummet cover, and he did the insides and Marvel Wolf been doing the... And, and this character here was an interesting character, this wraith-like, ghost-like character that was in Titans at that time, and then you had uh, this kind of beastal character that was in there. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know either one of those guys. Yeah, well, I like this, run, this, this era of new Titans not titans uh because it had you know it was had grum and artwork it was solid this is george perez cover here i believe i think uh, i'm not so sure about that perez mm -hmm. like but it's i don't know that it's perez. Yeah. oh jimenez it's jimenez he 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 mimics so Simonson, I guess this is either Walt or Louise Many. writing on that. <coughs> Probably Louise. Secret of Origins featuring the new Teen Titans. Now this is a Perez cover. Yeah, the West Coast and the East Coast Titans there, as well as the original members. Uh, just look at that. Bright was in that. He just passed away the other day. Mark W. Bright. Bright. Uh, I know he I know his run in the 90, early 90s on Green Lantern. Dave Cockrum in there, Dick Giorgiano, Tom Grummet, Carl Kessel, uh, Kevin McGuire, Irv Novak, uh, just, just a bunch. Trevor Von Eden in that. This was a special crisis crossover. You got to love those crossovers. Not really. <laughs> Yeah. Now this had the first appearance of Night Force in it, six page uh done by uh uh, uh oh shoot. Oh uh, that's an older one. I think I might actually have that one. Yeah, number twenty one. Uh I I like these sixteen pages. Uh sort of intros to stuff. I mean Noon Teen Titans started out in in DC Comics present like that. Uh, I think issue 26. Um, Night Force was done by uh, Gene Colan. I just could not think of that. I had to take a second. Black sensitive cover like this. He said you know. Colan. I did. <laughs> I'm easily entertained. Teen Titans number two, sort of the newer group. You you might not be familiar with them. No, probably not. Most of them anyway. Uh, we're talking ninety six. Uh, we're talking nineteen ninety six. Yeah, but by then I was already that's DC Dan Marvel. I was, I was already well down yeah. to you know DC probably buying almost nothing, and Marvel I was buying strictly X Men at that point. Dan Dan Jurgens with George Perez. There's the Adam, the 
you like that look for the item? Yeah, not really. Yeah, I don't put know a vest what, on well, him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the vest is about. Yeah. Uh, this might be a Rob Liefeld cover. It kind of looks like Rob, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, here's part of the Zero Hour, right? Beginning of mm, tomorrow. Yep. Mm -hmm. It came out in, what, 94? Look at, uh, I don't know what he's changing into. Beast Boy. Don't know what that'd be. Is that be. Beast Boy? That, I thought that was a floronic man for a minute. Well, no, I, I don't know what was. he would be doing in Titans, but. No, yeah, you're right. I don't know what he'd be doing in Titans either, but it looked like he was almost in you know, plant like. Uh huh. This was an else world. Changed. This was an else world that was kind of done manga. Look, scissors, paper, stones, titans. Okay. Yeah, I know. But like I say, some of this I got in bulk or you know different places. Oh, so. yeah, I get it. Yeah, uh, well, when you buy a store out there, you're going to get a lot of stuff that's, you know. Anytime I see 74 here, New Titans, I pick it up because it's the first appearance of Panther. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the one that I was saying was like Hellcat or Vixen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very nice cover by Tom Grummet there. Did the yeah, inside. I don't know why Shelby doesn't like him. I mean, he's got like the big meat. Personally, oh, and yes. having a few or something. Uh, no, I uh, it just is hard. Stuff. Here's a Perez oh. cover here. Yeah, what happened? This was an intriguing cover where they're holding her underwater, submerged. Come on. Uh, this artist I wasn't that hot on. It was sort of manga style. They they had a bunch of those come out about this time. Mm. Who is uh, it? Do you remember? Does it say? Uh, he probably in the credits if he did the interior. Mm. G R A U maybe his last name. Ah uh, yeah um, yeah you got me. I didn't totally recognize him. forgettable. That's what you are. See this is a good <laughs> cover. You know, Jimenez did a bunch of these covers, so it's, but uh, I would say that's Perez. I have to look down here, maybe. For, I, I see it's a Jimenez cover. He mimics, uh, yep. especially now, he mimics, uh, you know, Perez very. Uh, kill me now. I just, uh, I, if you can't come up with your own style, why do you want to? This is another Jimenez. And they're nice. I would I mean, George Perez always. But I don't want to be compared to another artist. Another one. This is Alan Davis cover here. And and John Beatty on the on the inks. Uh, Adam Warren art, Wild Beast. Yeah, that was that beast like one. Yeah. And you don't have to look stuff up all the time. Uh, Grummet is good. Uh, Love Super Weird promo books. Uh, Dallas Morning News did a couple of Spider-Man X-Men. I have that. I actually have that Dallas Morning News uh, promo uh, yeah. newspaper uh, bo uh, box insert uh, somewhere. Um See, I like testing myself, K-pop. I like testing myself, you know, on the artist. It, it keeps the mind sharp. Or what's left of it. I'm... Okay. <laughs> you... Okay. What? I... You... I oughta... Uh-huh. <laughs> So we have some Ultimate Fantastic Four. I get a bunch of this stuff around 2026, 27. Uh, you mm. know, leftovers, like I said, $50 long boxes. And 
So I would just uh, board and bag. The, well, normally they came boarded and bagged. One time, uh, you know, he said, uh, you can stuff, and it was all raw. You can, you can stuff uh, a whole long box full as many books as you can get in there. Now, I... Now I put a bunch of stuff in there, um, in the raw because you don't have the board and bag taking up space. I put over no. three hundred books in that. I put them to the. I I took an hour. I think maybe an hour or two hours stuff in that box. At least an hour stuff in the box, and yeah. uh, you know flipping them and picking out what I wanted, and that might have been multiples. I know that's where I got a lot of the uh, one. Uh, I mean, maybe 20 copies of, you know, Flash with uh, Ethan Van Skyver cover. Didn't even mm -hmm. know it was him, but it looked good, you know. And I would put them to the side, and then before I put the lid on it, I put them on top. I mean, not where they get damaged, but, man, that was, that was a slog to get that out of the door. That was heavy. Oh, dude, I bet it weighed a ton, yeah. It, it did. It weighed a ton. Uh, but I got my money's worth. Mm -hmm. I did. I did. Got my money's worth. Uh, Ultimate Extinction here. These are newer books. Sorry, folks. Never know what you're going to get. Ultimate X Men, The Ultimates 3. See, they had Ultimates 2, Ultimate 3. Da -da. Why can't we just have one run? Uh, uh, you know, I. I wasn't around for any of this, so I, I, I happily missed it all. All right, so here we go. Ocean Comics, Incredible or Origin Ooh, issue. Yeah, number exactly. one. Popeye, and he's got red hair there. All the principal characters. Ocean did, did some of those. Here's another one. 60th anniversary special. Mm, let's see if we got a date on it. September and it's kind of blurry. Yeah, 88, I think. 88, 89. Let me like go to this one. This one may have been photographed a little better. 87, yeah. So the other one's yeah, probably. Yeah. Because yeah. he probably came out in 38, right? That'd been. It's like uh, Popeye started doing leg day on that one, dude. Yeah. Look at that. Jacked up legs. Yeah. Yeah. He usually doesn't have that big of legs going on. Uh, bell bottoms. Uh, here you go Runaway Graphics Lucky 7 number 1 Lucky 7 number 1 I, I, I like groups you know they have interesting looking characters uh, this is 1993 Paris cover I have two copies of that uh, Vanguard I know you're going to know Vanguard oh yeah I remember Vanguard mm-hmm had some good covers, you know. I mean, it wasn't a bad looking. Uh, and this is this is a character from Gauntlet Comics. Uh, oh gosh, can't remember his name. Mm. Uh, but he he was doing a crossover in Vanguard. Yeah, I can't remember his name right off hand either. Uh, and of course, this is Savage Dragon back there. Yeah, on issue four, and there he is. Savage in the Dragon. Who did that? Oh, oh gosh, that's Andy Smith. I can tell that's an Andy Smith cover there. Mm -hmm. Jacked up muscles. <laughs> A lot of people don't know Andy Smith probably did that. You know, wonder if he no, did. I wonder who did this one. Number one. Andy mm -hmm. Smith. So if you're an Andy Smith. Andy? Oh, okay. This is, what this is right here. That's Andy Smith. Mm -hmm. You can see the Was Bart them? here sort of influence and whatnot, right? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I, yeah, Andy uh, <laughs> worked, worked with Bart for a couple of years, I think, or something. So. Excalibur here. And if they don't have it up there, they have it at the bottom. There you go. 1991 issue. <laughs> That's a Butch Goss cover there. <laughs> Or Jackson, if you prefer. See, I like this. This is like the Pieta, right? Where Mary's holding Christ. I mean, it's an old trope, but then you have the newspaper behind it with articles and stuff. Uh, it's pretty neat. 
I like it. I mean, it's kind of meh to me, but uh, I like the device of it, you know. A lot of text there. You get a lot of explanation, exposition, you know, on a cover like that. A lot of reading. Uh, here you go. Here's a rare one. Time Warriors from Fantasy General Comics. Uh, this is not the only one. I have some other Fantasy General Comics. Includes an official Time Warriors blueprint. Uh, the original beginning of the Skellen Empire Saga, which was kind of like a, you know, they had a skeleton like war uh, series in full color, but the, uh, it says it's in full color, but the cover's in black and white with little red. Yeah, a little uh, spot coloring. Ooh, Machine Man, 2022. Bernie Wright, uh, Bernie, uh, uh, Barry Winters. Barry Winters yeah, yeah, just look at the detail and all that. Yeah, that's cool stuff right there. Yeah. It made me a big fan of Machine Man. Bernie Wrightson did. Barry Winters. Yes. What did I say, yeah. Bernie Wrightson? Yeah, you said Bernie Wrightson again. You remember, um, Man from Atlanta. Man from Atlanta. Yeah, I used to love that show back in the day. Dude. When I was a kid, I was like, "Yeah, hey, hell yeah, I'd love to be able to do that." I got some of this uh, Bronze Age uh, Man from Atlantis uh, from what I call a newsstand uh, collection. Let me check the chat real quick. Can't wait for Andy Smith's nice and tight book, art book. I'm going to scan the pages and try doing some digital inking. Cool. Oh, very cool, Aubrey. Beware the killer spores. Blah. Spores. Number five. I'm sure I saw these on the stands, but didn't get it. That's an Arnie Chan cover right there. Check that out. E God, I'm going to be killed. <laughs> oh, man. Bait for the Behemoth. Now, I always loved this cover by D David Hoover. Dave Hoover. I always just like how it was done, you know, in the retro heroes. Vader's number one. I always loved that. Uh, 1993 issue here. Although he looks a little thin around the waist, doesn't he? Uh, the way he drew him. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little, uh, but I do like his style there. Uh, here's the Supernaturals, a Ghost Rider and Werewolf by Night. Cool, done very nice. Brother Voodoo looking very different, very image like, right? Oh, yeah. yeah what was that mercenary that went up against Spawn? Oh, uh, shit. I mean, he had the skull painted on his face. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Pre-Halloween mask inside. Think, like all five. And got her mask. <clears throat> this was a limited series, uh, one of four. Jim <laughs> Allant cover. You did a good job. I like that. Jim Allant? Oh, dude, I love his uh, Catwoman. He draws her oh, yeah. so well. Oh, uh, God. He so probably good. did all these. Yeah, that's a Jim Ballant cover right there. You yeah. have the Living Mummy there. Cool. I like that they give you a rundown here of all the characters that's in it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, this was a pretty neat looking series. I bought it after the fact. Yeah, I was already been gone before that came out. Cool. They all had pre Halloween mask in there. <coughs> Kitty Pride and Wolverine. Bet you bought that on the stands. Oh, yeah. Got all those. <clears throat> Dark Rain, Fantastic Four, <laughs> The Thing. Established 1961. I guess it was 60, <laughs> at the end of 61 when uh, the Fantastic Four came out. 61. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. 70 years. 
uh elsie has got some buttons like that that he found at the grocery checkout at grocery uh oh wow. i think i might have found some of them too uh and we're there at the beginning uh this is uh box three so that's why it's a little bit more modern stuff there uh let's see if i have uh oh see that black diamond mm -hmm. yeah civil danny okay uh, Simple Danny. Uh, well, was she? Did she? Was there a she movie? Played, she played. Yeah, in the eighties. Uh, played. Oh, it I might don't, have been a Black Diamond. It might have been a Corbin movie, actually. Huh. I, I like this. One. I like this logo here. The silencers. Check that out. That's almost like the Saint or something. Old school logo. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Warren Ellis uh, did the the writing on this. That's an image book. Yeah. You ever see that one? I don't. I don't think so. Who was the art on that? Van Linty. Van Linty and you. And you. Huh. Uh huh. Very stylized. Yeah, I, I like it. It's got a cool feel to it. Oh, I like this. Look at look at that cover. Yeah, that's sharp. Yeah. That's Look at that video game shit, too. I love that. Yeah, it's a good look. Yeah, I would, look at the face. I would there. never buy a comic book based on a video game, though. It's just, uh, I don't know. I, I got yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know how I got this one. Uh, Desolation Jones here from Wildstorm. Warren Ellis doing the writing. Hmm. No, again, this is after I was gone. Yeah, it's 2005. Here, here's Infantry. From Aftermath Comics and DDP. Never did understand what DDP, you know, stood for. I mean, I know, but this Alan Davis cover here. Fantastic Four fold-out cover. <clears throat> Might have had an ad on it. And then here's the regular issue. You know. Well, I mean, here's one. Let's see. That is the first. This is the first. Yeah, so that's sort of a collector's cover. A uh, little manga style here. Yeah, I know. And then uh, this is based on the cartoon Marvel Action Hour. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had some interesting comments. At least it don't have Herbie in there. As seen on TV. Have you seen uh, the Phantom? Was she, was she Phantom Man Cave uh, Thursday night? She was, wasn't she? I, I don't think she would have missed. This is a Twin Towers cover here with the Twin oh, Towers in the I back. I didn't see her yesterday. And, uh, I got a... a uh, that's a nice cover with the scroll shadows. Delivery message. She was supposed to be getting a package. Um, I've done that with a few pieces myself. Huh? I don't know what that was in reference to. I read it too late. Any humans here, I think? Uh... thinking maybe Jay Lee did these covers, but I know he did a, you know, a human series. I just don't know. Uh, this may not be it. <clears throat> Leonard Nimoy, Primordials, Concept of Isaac Asimov, 95, Techno Comics. You ever yeah, see I'm going to pop, pop back in next. My internet is being extremely laggy. Okay. Be right back. All right. Extremely rare, I would think. Uh, independent book, Galaxy Girl from DP. I have some very limited run indies that I mean, and look at the shape of that. That's that's like near mint, you know. Uh, I would rather have that than this which has a Jim Lee cover to it, you know. 
that's my jam. Uh, you're going to see several of these holographic ones when I, as a gatefold poster, poster, the origin of Spider-Man, final battle with the Green Goblin. I guess that's where he dies. Uh, all these anniversary ones from 1992 um, have several copies. There's another. Here's the, we'll have a Spider-Man number 100 issue. And uh, these are starting to gain some uh, traction. That's Alex, uh, however you say his name, Sabaku. Uh, he goes way back. <clears throat> but I know him from Web of Spider-Man. Uh, this is the first appearance of this armor here. Spider armor. <clears throat> Holographic background. Yeah, this is some stuff like this that I got from the comic stores. Very different places. This is like overstock, which, you know, nice black sensitive cover. You know, I can see right here. Ooh, breakage of color. You can see that. You can also see that hair on the bag, whatever. When I photographed the dust. Black covers like that are hard to, you know. Art Adams cover here. Gen, Gen 13 and Generation X. Yeah, hell spot. A, a, an Ed Benz cover. An Ed Benz cover. I like Ed Benz. That's number 50. Let me downsize that so I don't miss Shadow Hawk. Uh, he'll be back in a second. That's a nice cover there. That's another Ed Benz cover. Like that. An accumulation of snow on the logo. That's nice. Holiday thing, I guess. Got Holly up there. I always like this one. That's a nice, nice cover. Art Adams artwork in that too. Scott Williams, Kevin Nolan. I mean, John Nyberg. A lot of nice artists in that special. Carney folk. Uh-oh. I guess he was doing the interiors. I see the Ed Benz. <clears throat> this is probably some of his early stuff. That looks like Ed there. Yep. Campbell did a lot of those covers too. Very manga style. Mm -hmm. I like that. You know, it's got stuff going on. Manga style. Hmm. What happened? Shadow. There's a Campbell cover. Some of his early stuff. Issues. And that's the C cover. C 13 C. I hate the A, B, C, D covers. Uh, look at that. Homage cover. You could say Frank Rosetta or you could say uh, uh, National Lampoons, right? Poster, which is based on Frank Rosetta. Where are you at, Shadow? Campbell cover here. It's kind of nice when you get enough issues that you can do a backdrop like that, like Jughead. Up in the box. Wonder how they got away with that. Mm -hmm. People like his sexy Campbell. Did a lot of these Gen 13s. There you go. The Max in this issue. Uh, 
Uh, this is Art Adams cover. 97. And it's all new 3D special. It's a 3D book. Cool. That's 3D. Gosh. I'm going to have to give him an, another link. The heck. Oh, he must have got busy. Campbell. 3D special. I mean, these are near mint shape, you know, and they're already coming up on yeah, 25 years old. I don't know. <clears throat> Machine man, but his name was X-51, his de designate. Uh, that's some good stuff here. This spelled out Avengers, of course, all these issues. At the Fine Devil, that's free comic book day book. That's uh, Alex Ross cover. Part of the superhero projects. I had to go, you know, tried to go back retro, you know, get these because, man, public domain characters. Black Owl, Burning Eagle. And he just made these redesigns on these old characters. Just pop, man. I, I got this. Got this one in, uh, you know, got this one in Jackson. Got this one in, I might have got that in one in Jackson. It's got a price tag on that one, too. I tried to, tried to, you know, when I found these things, that one, too. Alex Ross cover. Uh, that one. I mean, just beautiful covers by Alex Ross. Uh, shadow, what happened to you? Only the shadow knows. Very cool. Taking these obscure characters, the target, the arrow. And I have a hardback edition of this stuff, too. The Scarab, the American Spirit. So cool. Wildcats, number one, Jim Lee cover. Number three, Jim Lee cover. That's Mike Plug cover. That's from Boom. Plug. Plug mm -hmm. did Ghost Rider in the early days, did Werewolf by Night in the early days. I mean, some of that early 70s stuff, it's nice to see that he's still doing that, you know, doing it in 2006. He's still going strong, producing interesting stuff like this. Look at that. Try and get that in near mint condition. All black cover. He has returned. Sorry about that, man. I had to restart the phone and everything. That damn that, thing was uncooperative today. That's a Johnson cover. Very nice, huh? Immediate. What's that, brother? Captain America. Black sensitive cover shows up everything like this. Has to be a deep blue. This shows up everything. This is a pretty nice copy though. It's not that nice. Hold on, we're we're researching werewolf loyal. Wait. Okay, my exact cover here. I always like those Zek covers. Uh -huh. Jack Kirby's Galactic Bounty Hunters from Icon. Slug. Ma Slug. <laughs> that is a Jack Kirby cover, as you can see. 
one of the last things he did actually before he died. That's a Jack Kirby cover as well. These were all done by Kirby before his, right before his death. Inked and released in 2006, I guess. Old stuff that had not been published. I think that was the premise of this. He did character designs. Um, and so they put this team together for this book. If I remember reading that right. That's a nice Batman cover. Secrets of the Batcave. Superman was uh, split in two. Just checking on channel there. And they, uh, maybe Shadowhawk's internet went out. Yeah. Um, Bog, Bogovich cover. Sorry, Rex. Carry on. I was just talking to Mama for a second. Be very good. That's fine. Uh, this is uh, Keith Pollard cover on the Eternals. Pollard. Pollard. Walt Simonson here. Walt Simonson. Cloak and Dagger. Forgetting the artist name on this. Very stylized. Did a bunch of the uh, Ken Stacy, I think. Ken, I think that's right. Uh, that did a bunch of uh, artwork in uh, Marvel fanfares. Uh, I've got a clue about this one. Introducing Mayhem. So Mayhem there, I guess, our first appearance. Beyond her there. Some Secret Wars, too. Leonardo, did a, Leonardo, whatever he goes by, he did a bunch of those. Deathlock special. Some more issues of that. This is Pat Broderick. These damn 2099s. Pat Broderick. Pat Broderick. Comic reader from 1979. Namor under the water. A book about comics. Uh, this is John Byrne. Putting the new X-Men in old costumes. Nineteen eighty. Wait a minute. We got Batman up there. Yeah, see Batman. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back up on these so you can see. see. You remember Comic Reader? Sort of mm. a fanzine about you know what was coming out and about comics. Oh, vaguely. I don't think I ever actually picked any of those up. I saw them. These were diminutive you know smaller in size that's a john yeah, Byrne cover like, there. The, uh, like around the digest size like that little dc one i sent yeah you. yeah a little yeah. bigger yeah yeah around uh, in there though right okay you're right moving on oh, uh, well, john think, yeah, it's a little difference <laughs> <laughs> i think it was a little taller let's put it that one this is a yeah. john Byrne yeah. cover here uh, putting the sort of the, some of the newer X Men yeah. in uh, the old yeah in the old school uh, suits yeah so That's cool. they're not worthless I mean John Byrne X Men here you know yeah uh, I kind of like Nightcrawler in the old black and yellow too he looks all right look like that uh huh yeah and then Batman's lurking up here Batman never lurks mm. he watches. There you go. 
Uh, well, Hawkman action. Gorwald. Oh, it's Gwar- Gorwald's first name. Yeah, Hawkman. 1980. Uh, Wonder Woman. This is one of the 1980. That looks like Joe Staten. No, Jack Abel with Terry Austin on the inks. Really? Wow. That must be very simple inking job because that's a clean style. Uh, Terry yeah. blew through that one. <laughs> uh, uh, uh-huh. The hardest thing was signing it. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Go cross up the original green, uh, green beetle. What the blue beetle, <laughs> Batman, the green beetle. I'm copywriting that right now. Don't take that X Pack. Don't take that Apex. Too late. Yeah. This Apex is, is- uh, a Bill Sienkiewicz and Bob Lighton cover here, looking very Neil Adams. Because that's our, you know, early Sienkiewicz. 1982. Although this was around the time he was changing his style. You know. Yeah, he was. Yeah, 80s. He was starting to change things up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Silver so, Samurai. Yep. Going up wow. against. Spider Woman. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm a girl. A and this is one of the last ones, December 1983, number two. 15, I believe the last issue was 217. Jessica Drew, the original Spider Woman. There you go. Now, here's a blockbuster giveaway that I picked up. Be extra safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like what I was talking about, like the Daredevil one I got, and I got a Wonder Woman one. Um, Uh They're they're those public service announcement ones. Oh, there's another one I picked up too. There we go. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Battlestar Galactica number two. Like weird shit like that, you know? You know, not a lot of people could have held on to them. Most people probably just throw them away with the newspaper. Not I. Not I. No. I like this artist that did this. I really like Mimic there. Uh, X Force. They're trying to hold the price down to a buck fifty. That's kind of a lot of. Uh, this reminds me of A lot of motion, a lot of action in it. I like yeah, that. it reminds me of Acupad with the musculature and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? A little bit. Mm-hmm. Little mm-hmm. uh Bisley or Sam Keith in there. I kinda like this cover, you know, where he sees his reflection and the tears on the, you know, it's kind of nice. Not a lot going on there, but you know. Yeah. Tight. And this is horrid. Look, this is this is Moloch's woman. You know, they had a female version of Moloch. Oh yeah, man. yeah, I forgot. Or not Moloch, but uh Modoc. Uh, Modoc. Modoc. Mrs. Modoc, or whatever they called her. Modoc. I just love the wee baby. Her <laughs> Gave her lipstick. Yeah, uh, well, that's the only way you can tell the difference between Modoc and Mrs. M. Tom Morgan cover there. This is you know, Timothy Truman and artwork. Jonah Hex by Timothy Truman. Two Gun Mojo. Vertigo, one of five. Jonah Hex. But this is the horrifying origin of Jonah Hex. Ooh, 2007. Ooh, horrifying. Uh-huh. Pomiotti. Huh? Jimmy oh, Pomiotti. These had some nice covers. Look at that. Where he's wrestling the cross. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's a bit of a, a liberal, but hey, he's, a, he's still yeah, good. I always like this with the skulls, the lighting on it, everything. Look That's at that. cool, yeah. Like the backlighting kind of that. Uh-huh. Kind of neat. Very nice uh, horror feel to it. Uh, guest starring El Diablo. Well, well. The hanging, the hanging tree. Yeah. Skull cover. Say hello to the devil. Oh, my. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you know, some of these are, that's kind of out of focus, but uh, nice cover. It's just, uh, you know, and it's kind of done in the sepia tone and black black and white. I, I don't have a problem with that. 
but yeah, so a lot of these are dark. I mean, look at this one here. That's a John Bolt Bollard cover. That's pretty cool. I mean, just his scarred face is hard to look at in such detail, like Bollard puts it. Oh, yeah. yeah puts that's, it. that's what I like shaving about. with the knife, it's <laughs> almost like he did that to his face, you know? Um, I don't know if I would go there. Nice horse. There's, he's signing it like a, you know, uh, Alex Toth. And we're back to the front. That is Diamond, dun, 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 box dun, eighty-seven. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if I'm going up or down mm -hmm. on that. Black Diamond. Black Diamond. <laughs> Where's Doc when you need him? He'd recognize that song right off the bat. Let's see if we've looked at eighty-eight. I don't think what so. Even Carrie, she was in. You still lurking out there, Carrie? No care. I always like this cover. Hey, you'll pass, Master Dane. That's a nice cover. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this Brave Old World. Brave Old World. It's a Vertigo book, yeah. It came out in 2000. Yeah. First one of four suggested for mature readers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, they finally put out something good, and I quit collecting by then. <laughs> now you probably saw this, where you had the Bernie Wrightson, Neil Adams, yep. Infantino, all the you know, even the '40s Batman in the movies. I, I mm -hmm. always like this Bogovich cover. It's one of my favorites. These legends had nice colored, you know, different. Uh, nice covers, man. Look at that. The the one that gave Green Lantern his ring. Yeah, well. Western, that's cool. I missed most of these, but I've tried to go back and get them, you know, on eBay. Oh, Every, yeah. yeah well. That's a nice cover. I like this cover, too, with the tape, the crime tape, and just the electricity and stuff. It's Pretty nice. There you go. Crisis number 11, next to last issue. Yeah. George Perez cover. Hmm. Nearly the end. Oh, it's a, was that Harbinger? Is that what her name was? The girl? Harbinger, yeah, right there yeah. in the middle. Yep. Yeah. You are correct, sir. Oh, I like these Paris covers. A little bit surrealistic. Yeah, we got to think about doing that. To, uh, what we were talking about last night, if you remember, as far as you know, like for the show, I'm trying to remember. I'm guessing you don't because you forgot that I told you last night that I was gonna put together a black and white package for you because I got like everything from art this time, I got like triplicate of everything, so I was gonna send you a set. And then today, you were on Rex X and Apex, and you're like, Oh, yeah, art is he. Is, he delivering yet? I'm like, dude, I told you I already got mine. I'm sending you one. <laughs> I slept since then. What can I say? I know. I, I do that Best too. I, have, Dan I go to in sleep the house. and I, I forget everything. Uh, he says, I always thought that he was a little two faced. Oh, but oh, that's not going to age well. <laughs> Whoops. And I kicked it out. Infinity and beyond. Rex has got like nine million windows open. I know. <laughs> we're going to ride to Chubby as theater. Pop ups. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, let's look at the campaign. There we go. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. That's all you get. Um, <laughs> no. What? I don't know. Trying to figure 
figure out what you're doing. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out too. Damn it. <laughs> that down switch over to here string that up there we go these silver age were like you know facts of reprint i don't know they're interesting they made prints of them too oh, eh? i have the hmm. prints yeah of the covers that one's blurry And they were fairly expensive, 80 pages for six bucks. Yeah, that ain't cheap. No, that's an Alan Davis cover here. Shadow of the Bat. There we go. They had some good covers. And this one was interlinking, see? There's the left side. It's issue 32. And that's 33. There we go. So you get the other side. Oh, very cool. Uh, a few issues there. There's an old Nick Cardi classic. Oh. Ghost. I feel ghosts. Yeah. 20 Center. There's a Gil Kane. Amazing Spider Man. Big yeah. Trouble. Who is this menacing figure? Why does he terrify the young Flash Thompson? When did this nightmare begin? What can anyone do to save him? It's probably an abusive father story, you know. Probably. Yeah. Salva Simic over there. I always love these. I mean his his art child, you know, Mark Bagley. Yeah. And he signs his stuff bags. Uh, yeah. His art style has not changed in all these years, really. No, I, I, but I he like came it. in. Yeah, he kind of came in with a very. Um, he's like a kind of uh, a hybrid of of McFarland and uh, Eric Larson. Mm -hmm. and, but he's he's got his own thing. It's a little bit of a hybrid of those guys, but. He's been doing it for what 25, 30 years now. So I like these DNA agents. I always did. I got a couple of those back when they first came out. Didn't they do those like a, a, a an older run and then a newer one on those? There you go, Joe Kubert Heap. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Joe Kubert did this one, fiftieth. Uh, Adam Kubert apparently Chuck Dixon wrote it. Oh. Adam and Andy on the inside, but Joe did the cover. If I'm not mistaken, this is Joe That's Kubert. Cool. I'm looking for a signature. I'm not saying there it is. It's over here. See Joe Kubert. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing he's not the band it. thing. Uh, Airboy would be burning by now. Yeah. He, yeah. He'd have been a crispy fried cutter. Yeah. But is that Airboy here, or is this Airboy here? That was what, did he have like a sidekick or something? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, yeah, I don't Timothy know. Timothy Trucks, uh, did, this was the first issue, and they were selling these things bi-weekly for 50 cents. Wow. Well, and I, that's how I was introduced. Oh, there is Carrie. Yeah. Uh, now these were expensive, four dollars. Uh, but sure they're, they're nice. Like this is probably getting into the Eclipse comic collection that I got. This is square bound. It's a biggie. Nice covers. Oh, uh, you know, expensive for the time. Hey, it's got the origin okay. Sky Wolf in it. Um. This guy did some work for Eclipse Comics and they were going out of business, so they partially paid him off in Eclipse Comics. I bought on eBay about a long box of nothing but, you know, kind of pick through what he had the best uh, and what I could afford. About a long box of uh, nice Eclipse Comics, and this is some of them. Uh, maybe. Uh, now, I got some of these also when I bought that... Uh, uh, store out uh, after my fire in 97. So, right. right. 
but look at the condition black sensitive cover origin of Airboy in there brutal cover there brutality uh, very nice condition on these they're big square bounds racist comparing <laughs> them to rats look at that human heads shot in the head destroy the rats oh uh this is i'm pressing this out that's secret six number <coughs> five. So it probably had some spine roll to it here's secret six number four from the silver age which is the 60s 12 center uh-huh bicentennial year got the aquaman and creeper backup features adventure comics that's what i'm saying adventure comics is an anthology it can be anything you want it to be jim apparel air biscuit. <laughs> what was it air biscuit. put air biscuit in there <laughs> air boy sidekick <laughs> now this is classic i wish i had this in higher grade because this is a classic jim apparel cover Ooh, uh, they so went by cool. weird adventure comics there for a little while they added the weird love that specter though man look at that i know Dang. it's 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 a great cover that's one of the best specter covers ever in my opinion uh, jim parl I, I liked him a lot too on batman who didn't oh well um <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't know I, the free speech had been trampled upon on the four o'clock shadow. Gee. Yeah, you should have known. Oh, that's a Chaikin cover there. Early Howard Chaikin cover. Turned into a petty dictator, Rex. I ain't got time to school you. <laughs> I ain't got time. Time travel. Yeah. Number one here, I'm thinking that's Mike Kaluta cover. But uh, I could be there. He goes stinking again. I know, right? Stinking. <laughs> Several copies of that. Hell yeah. Nice shape. Uh -huh. That's cool. Howard the Duck. I love these things when they come out, but I mean, I don't know what the attraction ever was. To Howard that's the a Duck. Frank Bruner cover, though. Frank Bruner. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. I just I don't I don't understand Howard the Duck. I don't. Gene Colan, King Size Animal. Uh, I do it for more of an investment here. You know, uh, I don't. If it would have been funny, it would be different. But uh, I didn't find them funny. The this looks right. like a Rich Buckler, yeah, Rich Buckler and Lee Lea Loa cover. Lea Loa did the inks. That's an early Lea Loa there, mid seventies. Oh, Jim. Yeah, I always hated Howard the Duck, too. <laughs> lie. Fantastic for No, I don't lie. That's so why you've got like a thousand Howard the Ducks. Now, I don't know who this artist was, Howard. but I did like this, and I picked these up, you know, at the comic shop. It was Tom Mandrake and Auslander doing the... It, we're talking 2007 here. Uh, pretty nice covers. Well, Mandrake and uh, uh, Oslander had a really good run on um, Shit the Spectre. We were just talking about Bloodlines. I think I have this uh, Dick Giordano or whoever did the cover here. Uh, I have this uh, production piece to this cover. Uh, I, I have a couple Bloodline things. Uh, I think this might be Mike Zach. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yep, Mike Zeck and yeah. Carl Castle. Castle. You got to look at their faces. You got to look at their faces if you're going to do the Castle run 7.2 parsecs. Uh, right. Let's see what you did there. That blood sport thing didn't go too well. Uh, Scott McDaniel. I like Scott oh, McDaniel. Yeah. Stuff. He did some of these green arrows. Uh, did a bunch of the, uh, didn't do this one, but uh, he did, uh, there, there's McDaniel again. Um, Nightwings, 
checkmate covers. Okay, they. Huh? What? Was that original checkmate covers? The. No, it's second run. Okay, that's what I was just gonna ask you because that, that's yeah. gonna say that. that Thought I had the full run of the original. Uh, I bought chapter. this off the stands, not two ninety two. I usually got the annuals. Who did this? This is uh, Dick Air John on Rich Buckler cover. Cool. I like Jerry John. He's he's always good, solid yeah. stuff. Uh, Superman Adam Strange in uh, number eighty two. So one of the latter issues. Of D uh, DC Comics presents Klaus Jansen cover here. Klaus, Klaus, written by Gary ba Carrie Bates. Dude, his uh, Daredevil like stuff is awesome. I always like this. You got sort of international, you know, from Israel, Brazil, Japan, Greece, Denmark, Ireland, all the characters here. I sure know. Global Guardians. <laughs> Santa Claus? He teamed up with Santa Claus. Can all the way back then. Tom McKnight's. Murphy Anderson used to draw there. There's another Gil Kane cover. Happy belated birthday to Gil Kane today. Clark Kent, Superman Clark Kent. How could that be? Hmm? To buy it and find out. Rich Buckler got Frank Guy Cola cover going up against the Atomic Knight. This is Mike Kaluta cover. I have a bunch of these, Madam Xanadu. At least I think I do. Hmm. This this was a dollar bin box for I mean a dollar bin book for a long time. Not anymore. Especially after she appeared in uh, uh, that Swamp thing. Hey, Carrie. Thank what Swamp thing? This much today. Air Biscuit. Mm -hmm. There's what, Swamp Thing I, I don't know about. There was a, there was a Swamp Thing uh, show that was canceled. 13 episodes. They put Madam Xanadu in there, Blue Devil. Oh, no shit. I've never seen any of those. Oh, you'd like it, but it only lasted one season. Netflix canceled it. I wonder if that's on Tubi. Yeah, I'll probably give this one to Lorenzo uh, doing an was it? What was it called? Rex, the Swamp Thing, the series? or Swamp Thing? The, I, I'd have to check. I have it on disc. Uh, no, okay. But it's really yeah, good. I, I, I think they cut it because of cost. Really? Which um, cover. which Swamp Thing lore were they using? Like the original story, or were they going more uh, Alan Moore? I think it was Alan. Ho I think it was Alex Holland, or whatever his name is. No, but I mean, you remember when Alan Moore revamped Swamp Thing in the, the late '80s, early '90s, or whatever it was, mid '80s? Um, kind of made him more of a global protector, and he's like connected to the earth right. and all that. He, he never really had all that before then. You know, that's what I was saying. What was the series? No, they didn't. It? They got into the old stuff. Yeah. The old stuff. Okay, cool. The original yeah. Bernie Wrights and Len Wein. And... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Uh, that makes me happy. I mean, I like the, the Alan Moore stuff too, but, you know, don't it, the original was just fine. <laughs> Dirk Durock. Uh no, he wasn't in that Netflix series, but Dirk Durock. No, he was, he was in the original ones, though the Swamp Thing movies. I remember those. Uh, uh, looks there, like... there he is in Return of the Swamp Thing on comic scene. Uh, what was your name, right there? With the, the gravelly voice and, and the big boobs. Um uh, Adrian Barbo. Adrian Barbo, that's right. Yeah, yeah. she was Um. Yeah, Duke, Dirk Durock. I had his autograph on the from Swamp Thing Two, where the makeup was a little bit more than just a rubber seat. 
Um, didn't didn't Corbin? It's his 99th birthday today. Didn't Corbin do that first Swamp Thing movie? Low budget. I don't know if that was Corbin or not. Could have been. But there he is on I'm comic scene. I'm not sure. I love those comic scenes. I didn't pick that one up back in the day, but with that Swamp Thing with him in the, all the makeup there, I wish you could see it better. Um, once I get this cleaned up a little, I'll feature some stuff I've got back there again. Um, Oh, maybe might be ready for me to show you. So let's see. Got something in the mail today, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you did get something in the mail. Let's take a look. See, so, yeah. I don't know if it's going to show up that great with the black light yet because it's it better. Uh, it's it's showing you got up. Got it hanging up in the hallway already. Oh yeah, I had to make a spot for it already. Yeah, well, you better make a spot for that tap. Right, hold on, let me. Oh, let me pull it down. I'll bring oh, it that's up. good. That was good. Nah, you gotta get a better look at this guy. It's all. It's easy. Sounds it. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, he's actually here. I hope to get my Inco T-shirts from RT Bear in the mail. Oh, dude, yeah, it's nice. Oh. So here he is, Vincent Price in the horror glow with the, wow. the Raven. Hey, Telfar. He says, I ha I hope it's a puppy. Dude, look at this. It even came unpunched. It's on the card. Oh, but, yeah. But yeah. the card isn't even well, punched. So that's freaking cool. Super seven people get them while they're hot. That's that's cool, and especially when it was turned magenta under the light there. But uh yeah, yeah, like just yeah that's totally color. different. They were you know, that figure there reminds me of the Caesar Romero Joker. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean and he's got that little pencil mustache, you know. These are you know, these are fairly simple. I think it's like five Six point articulation or whatever, they're not like super I fancy. I like the Raven, you know, uh, but, with the eyes and, yeah. And yeah. I just love Vincent Price, it's got a great little. I could have met him in 1987 and I didn't go see him, yeah. He got a great little write up on the back, you know, but mm -hmm. Vincent and what have you, Cuban pretty cool. Suit. Past yeah. Master Dan says Cuban suit, Cuban suit, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Old school, man. Old school. But yeah, I thought that was... And they deliver quick, man. I think I ordered that thing like two days ago and it showed up this morning. I did not expect it that quickly. Time for a commercial. Oh, I got... Rex, you got to... I don't think we'd get struck for bringing up a, uh, a, a toy site, would we? Like, we showed Titanic Creations and stuff. No. Does All right. Well, if you guys haven't heard of there, there's a toy website that's called uh, Death by Toys, and it's like it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's just really mundane situations that happen in everyday life, like packaged as action figures. Like mm -hmm. you've got the cat ignoring you, action figure. You got <laughs> taking a dump, and I forgot my phone, action figure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All kinds of crazy stuff. Dude. Yeah, like a visit with my therapist and the, the card on the back, you see a guy like plunging out of a window of a ten story building. <laughs> it's just crazy stuff. That's just wrong. Time for a commercial. Be happy, go hoppy. With hoppity time and duck. Those things were dangerous. Yeah. But they were fun. Yeah, but you know when they stop becoming fun? When you start having pillow fights with them. Yeah. Oh, me and my brother used to beat the shit out of each other in the backyard and do things. Just the plain an ones. Action though, you know, toy. An action the, toy. Yeah, like. an action toy. Yeah. But it was the big red one with the ring for a handle. 
So you could just like wield oh, it yeah. like a big like a big mace, right? And oh, me and my yeah. brother would be out in the backyard just big, whacking big the shit out. out of each other with those things too. <laughs> it's I all fun and games until you, until you hit that air valve. Oh yeah, that hurt like hell. Stone no, fucking, yeah. Figures, yeah. Somehow you always manage to get one. Yeah, we threw jarts at each other. We did too. The big ones. Oh yeah, we did too. Yeah. Lawn darts. <laughs> yep. Uh, this was a John Byrne cover that I didn't know about uh, that I missed. Uh, Incredible Hulk number three fifty nine, I believe, with the Thing, Wolverine, and John Byrne. Uh, oh wow, cool! What was that uh, Abomination in there? The Gray Hulk with the Abomination wrapped around him there, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've that's, never seen that one before. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, I like that. I don't know how I missed that. That was like. I like John Byrne on the Hulk. You know, he did a few yeah. of those things. Well, I, was, I was a big John Byrne fan until he like he kind of radically changed his style for a little while there. He went very uh now plain. do you remember mm -hmm. Arthur Teacher's fish and chips restaurant? I do not. Like we never had this around here. But have yes, you ever seen I it? remember? Mm -hmm. Really? I, I think they used to be big on the East Coast. Yeah. Because I, I remember him here as a kid, but like after like maybe 12 or 13 i never heard about him again but yeah that used to be Dan said i rode in the back and now he's flexing in the back of pickups i did too still do hell i rode in the back of jeeps with the tops off and no seat belts baby in the trails yeah yeah i rode hanging from the muffler i rode spinning around the damn drive shack I don't know if you heard me earlier today, but today's Arthur Adams' birthday. Is it? Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. How old is Mr. Adams today? Um, is he, is he, is he, he's, not, he's not still around, I don't is, know. is he? Yeah, he is. is yes. Is Art still alive? Adam's not dead. Yeah, he oh, is. Oh, okay. Yep. I, dude, I don't know. But Roger, I haven't kept up with Roger, in 20 years. The B movie film producer uh, Roger Corbin's ninety nine to today. He helped kick the careers of Francis Ford Coppola, James Cameron, Jack Nicholson, mm -hmm. Sam Greer, uh, Sliced Alone, uh, Martin it's, Scorsese, uh, it's, Ron it's Howard. Roger, okay, you, you're saying it wrong again. Roger Sorry. Corman. Roger Corman. Corman. Not okay. Corbin. You keep saying Corbin. Corbin was an right. artist. Sandra Bullock and the late great Jonathan Demi. Who was Jonathan Demi? Uh, Do you know? I know the name, but I, the face is not <laughs> coming to me right. I don't know. some reason, I want to say it's like that gravelly-faced-looking guy that used to be in all the mobster movies and stuff, but I think he's still alive. Yeah. Paste is full of micronutrients. Okay. Mm, yeah. We had Long John Silvers, right. Um, we had one here. Uh, I, I imagine it was, you know, eight, How about, eight, uh, five, yeah. Ram Captain D. Yeah. Did you, you guys ever hear that one? Loved off the teachers. Captain, Captain D's. D's. Oh, yeah, we got a Captain D's. This is one of my favorite places to eat, but you can't afford it anymore. You guys you still got it? one? Yes, we still have one. Absolutely. Oh, shit. I thought they all went out of business years ago. Mm. They did up here, man. They just, like, folded up shop. All right, here we go. When you have an elected people then you're also going to be able to, to save on gas, but you got to be able to... Or any menstruating person in this country can make oh, decisions God. over their own body. <laughs> I'll, I'll limit their ability to get gender affirmation treatment in their state. <laughs> it is now my distinct honor to introduce the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, John Roberts, to administer the presidential oath to the next 
President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden. The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Oh, Hillary's oh, wait, cackle. Right, sit on the stage. Hey, they get hot. I got mama. I got Harry May. The kid used to come up and reach in the pole and rub my leg down. You got more questions. I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. You've been patient. Your patience is wearing thin. And the refusal has caused all of us. Your gas price is going down. <laughs> <laughs> the pump. So much has happened under this president. He's leading us to world war. And we will make America great again. God bless you. I love you. Fake plane. Yeah. Fake plane. What? <laughs> what I miss? He was saying that was a fake plane in Afghanistan that people were clinging on to. Okay. I don't make them. I just play them. Billy D. Williams' birthday today. Uh, he is 87. Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Oh, yeah. A lot of birthdays. You want to birth get the ladies? Uh, first, you got to get you some Colt 45. Ladies love Colt 45. Night, Glenn. You don't remember those commercials, See, right? What? Uh, yes, I do. I remember Billy the Cold 45 commercials <laughs> by Billy D. Those Williams. are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I remember them well. When I think of Billy D. Williams, I think of Cold 45. I really do. I do, too. I mean, that's, yeah. it's Cold 45, and then it's Lando. It's, it's like number one and number two. Yeah, Lando. <laughs> was 45 in the clouds yeah dude i'll tell you what i was i mean i was still pretty young and into star wars so like after the end of uh empire strikes back like i hated fucking lando dude i was like screw that motherfucker <laughs> then they bring him back in the third one and he redeems himself but yeah at the end of the second one i was like yeah fuck that guy Oh, you remember this guy? Oh, yeah. I forget what his name is. He's, he's got the little uh, critter that's always hanging out with him, though. I like that guy. Salacious Crumb? Yeah, Salacious, Salacious Crumb. Well, that was Jabba the Hutt. This was Jabba the Hutt sort of side man, right? Right, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I forget his name, though. Now, the actor, this same actor, he's done up pretty heavily in makeup here, but uh, he was in uh, Werewolf of London. He's the guy that gets killed in the subway by the werewolf. American Werewolf in London, you mean? American Werewolf in London, yeah. Okay, yes. Same actor right there. I can see it. Oh, man. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was kind of freaky with the sharp teeth and the. He looks uh, he looks a lot like the dude that ended up playing um, Darth Maul too. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think it's the what, same guy. I think they not, just it's not. But yeah, yeah they, they do look similar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a very English looking bloke. Can be only one. That's all I can say to that. <laughs> there can be only one. 
Charm of Reckoning number three campaign is now live. Dude, have you updated that? I updated it like at six o'clock this morning when I woke up. And, I saw uh, 12, 12 backers. Dude, he was at 64% when I woke up this morning. I couldn't help it. I had to see where we where we got him to. <laughs> yeah, I need to get here. Yeah, he went from he went from fifty seven to sixty four overnight. So yeah, uh, I think that was, was those two other backers. So uh, yeah, it adds up. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he very pleased. Uh, I sent him the link, uh, but he must be busy with kids. I get it. Uh, uh, he's got the two munchkins, man. That's gotta be. I know that's Phyllis Diller. Ninety percent have no idea who this is. But I do. It's Phyllis Diller. Now, what she used to call her husband is who tends to call him Fang or something. I was talking to Fang. And that that laugh. Oh, dude, yeah, she was. But uh, she was the voice of uh, what was it, uh, Frankenstein, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, I think, on. Uh, the, the original Monster Mash cartoon. You remember the old? Uh, oh, the boys. Um, she was the yeah. Well, what was that? What was that cartoon called? Um, it wasn't Monster Mash. It was, you know which one I'm talking about, though, right? I mean, the original one. They, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking. It was a Rankin and Bass, probably. Yeah, was it? yeah. It was a Rankin and Bass. It was one of them claymation ones. Like the uh, Monster Party, something like that. Monster yeah, Mash Monster Party, Monster yeah. Party, Monster Mash Party, mm -hmm. something like that. But yeah, they mm -hmm. had everybody back in that. Movie. It was great. They kind of stole the concept for you know, that new Disney uh, Adam Sandler movie, you know, with the vampire, uh, whatever that one was called. I can't think of anything today. It's Saturday. I shouldn't be required to think. Now, Ed Pisker was the K-5 guy, right? Yeah, that's the... Yeah, young fella. I've been that's, seeing, uh, Paul, I've been seeing posts like this and other stuff. Uh, you know, the man. Who are you barking at, Missy? I paid more attention to him after his death than uh, uh, when he was alive. Uh, oh, that's not. Oh, that's just tree porn there. The hell, <laughs> Monster Mash! You got it right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it was Monster Mash. Okay. Now, now the Rankin and Bash one that I liked was the, you know, the uh, one with the kid dentist and the abominable snowman. You know, I guess Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, yeah, right? Rudolph, uh, with the Isle of Unused Toys or whatever. But you had the Caveman where his lip, his upper lip, went up and down. Yeah, you remember that? It wasn't yeah. like you and me with our lower jaw. It was the upper. It was yeah. very, very and weird. And it was, it that was the lip. island of misfit toys. There you go, island of misfit toys. Yep. And I'm a squirt gun. What? It's squirt jelly. <laughs> right. And you know, Toy Story, you know, took off on that. Oh yeah, Blinky like dogs and yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know everything's got some kind of influence from somewhere. You know, it's everybody grows up. Oh, they yeah. see things when they're a kid. It it, it it does. You know, have it you makes, had dinner? Have I? No. Have you had dinner? No. Of course not. I've been here with you for the last hour and a half. I had a couple of hot dogs and chips before. Uh, and you see how he's really starved me for hours, hours and hours broadcasting time. <laughs> Maybe that's in me because I'm thin. The thin the man. Evil, evil man. 
General Kenobi, years ago, you served my father in the Clones Wars. I also rescued her from her kidnappers, but apparently she forgot about that. Well, like, I don't get that. <laughs> uh, you, you haven't been keeping up with the Ripover stuff, man. Dude, there, there is some funny stuff going on out there that okay. you got to see. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> there is some funny, funny stuff happening. Oh. Oh man, cool Cosway, check this out. Okay. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. I mean, not really. Uh, the Photoshop is not that great. Oh wait, okay, oh, no okay. wait. That's not Photoshop. No, That's AI. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> She's definitely not standing next to the Batmobile. The background is laid in there. Mm, that's true. But what are you going to do? Well, uh, you want authenticity? Go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. If I go to uh, the red light district, uh, that, that concept just does not hold water. Those, appear yeah, to be mine those are cool. Yeah, those are kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although Frankenberry was always a little fruity. Oh, come on, that was a good one. I, yeah. I might have worked with fruit, uh, fruit brew. <laughs> He's a strawberry fucking Frankenstein, for God's sake. He's pink. He's got loafer lightener. Well, it's time <laughs> for a retro thing. The the Trash Wars parody video was great. Have you seen that one, Rex? Um, That's the one I was talking about. It's freaking yeah. hilarious. Oh, my God. I think I did. <clears throat> Extraordinary creatures ever seen are wars in a war, a war between there's Salisis Rum. I did there was laugh. The strongest power in the universe. Use the boss, feel the force. Feel the force. Fight the battles. Live the adventure with Star Wars Return of the Jedi. The Rancor. The Rancor. I think I have a Rancor in there, actually. Yeah, the original yeah, old school toy. Uh, yeah, that was yeah, a, that I've was one of the first old. like really a, big ones. Uh, oh yeah, well, not I got first, an X-wing but... fighter in there. I know. Original. But yeah, they I, I've they got didn't some do original it, like some Star big Wars toys stories. all there. The only one. I oh, can dude, I have on right now is the little medic. I have there. the X-wing, a Tie Fighter, Darth Vader's Tie Fighter. I had the scout ship. I had the Millennium Falcon. I had the land speeder. I didn't have the AT AT. I had the, uh, what was it? Just the AT, whatever it was called, the two legged one, not the four legged one. The two legged one, yeah. You, that, well, I think you said the only one that you didn't have was the elephant four legged one. Yeah, the big one, yeah, the four legged one. I was the only. Dude, I moved for like a year. I get back home and all my Star Wars shit is gone. And I was like, oh, I, 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 I just donated it to the side. Like, are you kidding me? They were all the original, like 1977 fucking R2-D2, Luke, <laughs> everything. Was... But as soon as they came out, I was buying them. Was like, the oh, ink art of Gary Martin's coming out. Have you received your copy yet? No, I have not. And mm. Thank you for reminding me because I can't be, wait to get that in be my Be watching hand. for it because it'll be in your hands it'll be here. Little hands. Fairly quickly. Uh, dude, I just I want to sit there and dote on it. Uh, dote on the frowner? I just on uh, all that, his ink work. And then that was the one he added the, uh, the Frankenstein page, right? Was that 
the same book or am I thinking of somebody else? Who added the Frankenstein tribute page? Was that or was that Aaron Lepresti that added that? Shit. I don't know. <sighs> Six o'clock on a Saturday, right? I know, you're asking me questions. <laughs> Six o'clock on Saturday. What the hell? <laughs> I can't keep up. Problem. Stop. Dude, my phone Jane, company. Jane. Is like, you, do you know how much data you've used? And yes, I know how much data I've used. We're promoting a book. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, my phone company's going to be tough. Like, I, I'll switch to somebody else. Alright, time for a blast money. from the past. My money. See, I play that all day long with that top of the Very simple graphics. I like those pew 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 games, you know? It looks much more exciting on Choppy Ed Spears. It's probably at a standstill, are you kidding? No, dude, it's like I'm watching it. It's like it's moving very quickly on Choppy Ed Spears. Makes it look like you're a pro. I never played this one. I played something similar to it. I, yeah, I played tons of games that are similar. I, I'm not sure exactly what this one is. Uh, uh, it's uh, from Commodore 64, I believe. Hmm. Uh, music is definitely like 8 bit. <laughs> That is uh, Delta. Hey, Delta. Nineteen eighty-seven. Uh. Solid. Oh, I had the stupid cloud car. Solid. Forgot about that. One. The cloud car. Yeah, it was like a pot. It was like a orange pod wasn't it not much to it yeah it was like a like a bronzy kind of orangey little it was it was horrible i don't i don't even remember why i wanted it it was like because it was in the movie i guess yeah got out of the cloud car uh rock and roll ninjas out Delivering, Death Sworn, and Black and White. People getting their packages. There's a lot of lot of projects fulfilling right now, actually. Also had Palpatine and Boba Fett. I thought that's what you called uh, not Timothy, but uh, Smoke Right. You call them both trouble? Is that it? Rock and Roll Ninja, of course, being uh... I'm sorry, what was that, Rex? Uh, I'm trying to think of who did Rock and Roll Ninja. Uh, that was uh, uh, your boy Zach and uh, Matt, uh, Matt Bar. Here's packaging on the neck. I believe, uh, I believe Elsie got one of these creatures from the Black Lagoon. Oh, cool, man! Yeah, yeah, they were doing really cool, uh, like black and white and gray tone variants of the figures. You know, they, I mean. They're still colored, technically, I guess, but they weren't doing like color versions, you know. They were, I uh, very yeah. cool. 
they did a color version of uh, King Kong. Yeah, Limited but color. like, did you see like they did like a color and then they did a, a black and white version of the creature from the Black Lagoon? And like the black and white version is just so cool, dude. The black and white uh, Dracula, just, oh, so good. Time for a foreign commercial. <laughs> <laughs> they check in, but they don't check out. Exactly. I think that's exactly what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah, he was just more, way more happy about it. Twelve hot hits for a cool penny. Oh, dude, was that the Columbia Music Club? Yeah, I mean, you and I both were suckers for that, you know. Oh, no, dude, I did those people so wrong. Like, every two years, I would, like, hit them up again, give them another 10 or 15 CDs or whatever, and then never buy another one. And then two years later, the thing would come back out, and I'd do it again, and they never once, like, caught up with me. Out That was when I was a teenager. <laughs> uh, here's a uh, Frankie B drop there, Kajus and Cowboys. Frankie Let's take a look. B. Oh, boot. Frankie's such a player. If you guys don't know Frankie B. Washington, his music is very popular. <laughs> Mr. Smooth Pajamas. Oh, I'm going to enjoy you some kajus now. He's, he's hey, old Rob, what's up, buddy? He has the uh, smooth saxophone look. <laughs> Jazzy. Yeah, hey, Rob. Jazzy, Damn man. Rob. Jazzy. I never thought about that, but that works for me. Remember that old cartoon, the little... Uh, Jazzy Blackbird walks in. He's got the sunglasses and the little uh, beanie hat. What do you call those? The beret. Little mustache and everything. He's a jazzy man. Jazzy. It's perfect for me. Are you excited about the new Beetlejuice coming out? Hmm. The old Beetlejuice was released 36 years ago this week. It's a real comedy that catapulted the careers of director Ken Burton and star Michael Keaton. The making of its story is strange and unusual. Imagine it is. Beetlejuice. You can go back and watch Beetlejuice. It's showtime. I would like to be excited about a new Beetlejuice, but I just can't. I don't want to be disappointed. Now, Gina, there, I was always kind of hot for Gina. I mean, if they would have made it 20 years ago, maybe, yeah. but even that would have been 10 years, probably Which too late, good. you know. When did Beetlejuice came out? It was like 83, wasn't it? Eight, something like that. Um, do your math. I said, what, 30? Six years ago? Oh, fucking uh, do your math. I, I would, motherfucker. It's 10 minutes to six. You want me to do math? Huh? Do you? Sure. Come on. Why not? All right. Sure, why see not? you later. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Time for another commercial. Retro toy commercial. Ooh. Uh, not American, by the way. and thousands on an ice lolly to keep a girl hmm. and a free on safari wild animal picture card as well the lady Bad. especially for girls a man's mate. uh if you say so trouble uh Uh, that's you that turned up the naughtiness, Timothy. Yes. Did briefly behave, Rob, when you joined the chat. Yeah. Uh. Starts to behave, yes. Mm. Trouble, you have a one-track mind. Yeah. A lot of men do. I disagree to your naughtiness for me yeah. better behave all right i have a visual i have a visual for okay just imagine timothy as the horse at least he knows what he wants <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah smart horse uh carrie get a hold of yourself please oh my that's a throw down challenge for her are you kidding uh Oh, yeah. Anybody recognize this? I do. Thundar the Barbarian. Yeah. Broken Moon. Beautiful piece of artwork. I need a poster of that. To remind me where we're headed. Thundar... Or me the barbarian. I take my arcade games way more serious when comic books are on the line. Wow. So apparently, they're bringing back some of those collectible bags. Uh, that looks like some 90s books. I'd go for that. I'd check those packs out. I don't know how much they're wanting for them. Right there with the Funko Pops and the Batmo, uh, Batman mugs. But if I see a comic in the wild, you have me uh, very interesting. Uh, what time is Apex tonight? It's 8. If we have it. I don't know if we're having it or not, Rob. Are you supposed to join us? I can send you the link. If we, if we have it, um, it's usually at eight. When we first started that, it was at midnight. So if people were on the West Coast, it was one. If we went a couple hours, it was like three in the morning before we got done. It was crazy. But that was the time he wanted to do it or had time to do it. He eventually moved it up to eight, which is a much better time. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard from him. He missed Rex Hex and Apex, so I couldn't earlier. I guess he was working. I don't know. He never gave me an explanation. He was in here earlier. Um, so I, I didn't get a chance to ask him uh, whether we're going to have it or not. I, I always assume we are and try and be available. Um, but I never have any heads up on whether we're going to have it or not. It's just not the way Apex arose. He's he's lucky I'm so 
diligent at being there. Uh, he might take three weeks off and then we do it. You know, it just depends on his work schedule. I know he's been doing uh, some over, uh, well, not over stuff, uh, some like Grubhub delivery or something. DoorDash. He's doing DoorDash uh, of late, apparently. So, oh, I don't know if we're doing it tonight or not, but you're, uh, you are invited. Uh, I can send you if you're going to be up that late. Um, Carrie smoking that wacky backy confirmed. Well, sort Timothy out. I gave up on that a long time ago. I didn't even ever try. You remember? Yeah. Late night, man. It's crazy. But that's from the very beginning. We did it at midnight. You gotta really pace yourself. That type of stuff. Oh, is this Frank Frazetta? I don't know. What is this? Looks like Frank Frazetta Superman, doesn't it? Oh, um, wow, wow! Already asking for it. Oh, well, I guess it should have come with it. Yeah. I'm going to do myself a service and get out of here early because I am tired. Uh, get a little rest. And she's, Abby has her uh, chin on my knee. <laughs> she's wanting to go out. You want to go out? You ready to go out? You just want some attention after a couple hours. Huh? You going to get up here? You going to at least pop your head up? You're not. You're just going to wag your tail? You gonna sniff something? Get you, boy. Uh, get some rest. No doubt, man. No doubt. Uh, I try and pace myself. Uh, I'll try and make, uh, if we don't do the Apex thing, even if we do do the Apex thing, try and be on with Russ and Glenn and everybody on uh, Sunday Funnies. Uh, that's not near as brutal as Friday, which they want you to get up like 4 a.m. in the morning <whistles> for the UK crowd. Uh, but it's like eight o'clock on Sundays. So it's a little better. I'm not a daytime person, folks. Eh, only about uh, do the math a couple minutes shy of two hours. Anyway, keep collecting. Uh, I will get some rest and enjoy a little bit of my time and weekend. Uh, with Abby, um, Rob, if I find out with, from Apex, if we're having Apex after dark, I'll, 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 uh, ask him, I'll let you know, uh, take care all.